before you start making any flowers, I wanted to walk you through this entire process so that you understand how wafer paper reacts when it comes in contact with liquid. Knowing this is really important so that you can make use of what it offers to your advantage, which is what I'm going to show you in the subsequent videos as we tackle more foliage and flowers. I would highly recommend you to watch through this entire fundamental video before going into other videos. Let's get started with the basics. So for the sake of demonstrating how wafer paper reacts with liquid, I'm just going to choose a random colour to start with. So we are taking colours out of the equation in this video itself. So I'll just be using copper from Wilton over here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out some of the colours onto my colour well here. We're going to use vodka to dilute um, our gel colours and um, the reason why we used vodka is because we will need the colours to um, dampen our wafer paper fast enough and we need the colours to dry fast enough as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just add some vodka into another well here. And I'm just going to make it into orange tone. You can always use a clear um, vodka to test out but I'm going to use orange so that you guys can see clearly what I'm talking about. So wafer paper is extremely sensitive to liquid so if you're using too little um, water what it does is it will remain dry as it is now and what happens if you use too much water is that it will shrink. So I'm going to show you guys what happens. When I add too little water so I'm going to tap off all the excess and I'm just gonna go ahead and brush it on my wafer people. I'm gonna brush both sides. So in this case, I'm kind of like purposely adding very little um, water onto my wafer paper. So the texture itself is still pretty dry. You can hear from the flaky sound that we have over here. And a good way to determine whether your wafer paper is in the right um, condition to work with is to get ready a veiner. So here I have my rose petal veiner. So you can see the veining lines are really clear so it really helps us see very clearly what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and add this wafer paper into the veiner and I am going to give it a good press. You can also even hold it up just to kind of like press it down. Okay, and then I'm going to open it up. So you can see when your wafer paper is too dry, what happens is it doesn't take in any veining and it may also crack as you can see right here. So this is definitely not the right consistency to work with. So I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to show you guys what happens when I add in too much liquid. So at this point, I'm just going to dip my entire brush with all the liquid and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spam a lot of liquid on my wafer paper. You can see the difference between this and the one that we had previously. So it's spilling all over on our working board as well. I'm going to flip around. I'm going to do the same to the back. So you can definitely see the high contrast between these two uh, pieces of paper. So this is too much liquid and this is too little liquid. And what happens when you have too much liquid is the entire wafer paper becomes so drenched and it actually starts to stick onto your hand. So you can compare the difference between these two. This is flaky and this one falls like a cloth. So you can start to see it's shrinking as well and when it sticks together you can never really pull them apart anymore. And this is what you are left with. So if you can see if it's too wet like that, there's no way that you can imprint any veining on it. So I'm just going to throw this guy into the veiner. Here you go. So it may be able to take some veining, but as it starts to string further, this veining will disappear and you probably will not be able to get anything of it. And your petals will be too soft to work with as well. So this is definitely not what I would prefer. So if I just to put it next to each other, you can see the difference between too little liquid and having too much liquid. 
So this is really sensitive. It will take some time for you to find the perfect balance. When I hold classes, I always have this small little section for my students to play around with the wafer paper first, um, allow them to gain better control of the liquid on the wafer paper before we start working on flowers. So I'm going to pull these two aside and I'm going to show you guys what happens when you put in the right amount of liquid on the wafer paper. So the right way to um, apply water onto your uh, wafer paper will be to brush Pull your brush from an outside area and gently just paint over and then end off towards the other end as well. So what you want to do is always start from the outer point and end off at the outer point itself. And the reason why we do that is that we do not have one starting point over here. Um, and what that does is if you keep starting off from this point, you're going to over drench this part and this part is going to start to uh, shrink and that's not what you want. So you want an equal um, level of liquid on the wafer paper itself. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same to the back. So from outside to outside. So this is the right amount of um, liquid that you should have. It starts to dry out on another side while you're applying on the previous side. You can always go back and just add in a little bit more. Okay. And then what you can do is you can just lift it up and then put it in between the veiner and then vein it. And there you go. So this part is a little bit dry, but this part is perfect. So you can see the very beautiful veining of the rose petal veiner on the wafer paper. So this part is a little bit dry, but this is perfect. So sometimes I make mistakes as well, but you just have to keep going back. So just a quick uh, recap, you can see this guy, definitely too little um, liquid. This one is still so moist and it has shrunk to this size itself over here. And this is the one with the perfect um, liquid content in it. So you can see the difference of it as well. You can see no veining here, no veining here, but you can definitely see the veining here. So this is a good practice for you to understand uh, if you're on the right um, uh, liquid level for your wafer paper. And just one last troubleshooting um, uh, method to know if your wafer paper accidentally dries out uh, while you're working on another paper, uh, a good way is to have a vodka spray with you and what you do is with the spray itself, you can kind of like revive the liquid content in the wafer paper and it allows you to kind of like vein on it again. So this is my vodka spray. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it at a distance. You do not want to kind of like overwhelm the wafer paper with vodka spray. So what you need is to hold it at maybe say a 15 cm distance and just do a quick spray. And then the back as well. Okay. And then you want to kind of like slowly massage the liquid into the wafer paper. A little bit, bit more. And then once you're in the, on the right texture, you can go ahead and put it in. And then you can vein it again. So this time we should be able to bring back the veining on top. So there you go. Okay, this part has definitely cracked a little bit, but you can see that the veining has kind of taken place um, higher to the top as well. So this is what you can do if your wafer paper gets too dry. Get a vodka spray, spray it at it, um, just kind of like bring back some of the liquid content in it, and then you can start to vein again. So keep in mind, this is how wafer paper works. The more you do, the more you will be able to control the amount of liquid that you should be using to achieve what you want to achieve. Don't forget the troubleshooting methods as well and you should be good to go. So good luck with it and practice makes perfect.